Hi right, guys, this is going to be part three on our Pioneer 1000 sub transmission. So in the last video we tore all this apart and we pointed out what our problem is here with these dog ears and stuff being ate up and all this. Now we got our parts in and we're going to work on disassembling this and getting our new parts on and reassembling our sub transmission. So let's get started. Okay, so now we're going to start disassembling this. Now you'll have a needle bearing inside this gear here that you gotta reuse, but for right now we're gonna lay it down like this. You got a shim here in front of this one. Like I said, you got a shim. Right there's your shim right now, we're gonna lay it down flat. There's a shim here on this one as well. Right now we're gonna take it off, and as you see, it also has a needle bearing as well. We're just gonna leave that needle bearing on. Now, this was the last one we took off. Gonna be the first one we put on. And laying them down flat like that, what I like to do, so like whenever you go pick them back up, then you know it goes on like that, so. That's there, this is our shim. This is gonna be our next one. This one here has this piece in the middle of it that rides on this shaft this splined piece and you have to get it out and it has got a snap ring in it so we're going to get us some screwdrivers and stuff to get this out so now the first thing we got to do is get this lock off so we're going to pick up on this just a little bit and i've got a very blunt or a very sharp pick here now I'm sure what's gonna happen is once we lift this up all the ball bearings inside this are going to go everywhere. So now we get get this piece over here. We're going to take get all our ball bearings separated. Go around to the back side. Take this lock out as well and then get ready to load it into the other one. Okay, so when you get ready to put your, this uh, snap ring or lock in the back side, this does have a groove in it, so just kind of get it pulled apart like this, like a slinky, start feeding it in. Pretty easy for that part of it. And remember this side right here with most teeth on it will be the side that goes on first. So don't get that mixed up while you're flipping and flopping. So now, we're gonna get ready to put our bearings on. And as you can see, Each side should hold four bearings. Okay guys, so I made a mistake. There's only supposed to be three of these in there. I went back and looked at the book and there's only supposed to be three per slot. So, three. Next step is, you've got a, another snap ring deal here. We're gonna come in here Pull it off. A 
that's going to allow you to stick that down in your hole to where you can load these up three at a time two three now once you go around all 14 slots and get three bearings in each one then we'll be right back and put our lock in and our other snap ring in. Okay, so we have all of our bearings in. Now it's time to put our lock back on. Now, still be careful because just because you have that lock back on, that's only half of it. We've got to get our lock back in here so you still can spill everything you've done put together. Now, it's time to put this one in. like she was and remember side with the most dog ears on it our teeth goes toward it make sure your shims on this side just like that now it's time to put our thrush washer back on there now we've got our needle bearing in here we're going to remove it Put it in here. Slide this on. And now this piece is put back together with its new parts. And you can see where this piece here have been eaten on the corners and stuff. This piece here has been eaten on the corners and stuff. So now it's time to get ready to put all of our pieces back into our cases. Okay, so we got everything put back together. Now it's time to put it into our case. This here is your shift fork. These two slots here have got to line up. I call this the shift drum. It's got to line up with this slot right here. It's got to slide down that slot right there. And it's got to go in that hole right there. Now these are two other holes where these two bearings are at. This is going to be for this shaft and this shaft. Now your bigger gear, the one that's bigger around, goes on the bottom. It lines up with this gear on the bottom. Back on there. And sit. they all sit together like that. Now these three pieces have to go in at the same time. Are you going to pick all three of them up with the shift forks in place?
just like that. As you can see, it is a little bit challenging to get everything lined up, but once you do, everything works just like it's supposed to. Now you wanna make sure that if you've taken your washer off here on your reverse gear that you put it back on. And if everything's back on like, and yours looks like this, it's time to put your final drive gear back in. Next step, we're gonna install this little cluster here. You do have a needle bearing for this one. So be sure you don't lose it as well. All right, now you put this thrust washer here on this one, and this is gonna be a snug fit, so you will have to work it down on there. Uh, as you can see, just like that, because it is a very snug fit on there. Once you get your thrust washer on, spin your transmission around. Now, over here, you can see you've got slots here how they move. This is where your ears for your shift forks are supposed to be at. So what we're gonna have to do is, is pick up on them. Pick up, oh, too far. And there's one down here on the bottom and usually it follows pretty well and as you see now we've got it back where it's supposed to be at and got it out of that solid groove for disassembly all right guys so one thing to keep in mind is to get this drum and everything lined up and get it ready to put back together is you want to turn this drum till you get it on your second lobe right here and the point for doing that is is so that this mark right here lines up with the two marks on your case and you get ready to put it back together. Then we're gonna put this arm in and you're gonna line this mark up right here. So this mark goes in between it just like so. We're gonna put our washers on or shims you got one that goes there and then you got a bigger one that goes here and you've got a shim that goes here with your spring and then another shim piece that goes here okay for the next step what you want to do is get ready to install your park pole and what you're going to do is you got the shaft it does have this bigger end on it so it's going to go in first Make sure it goes down all the way, followed by your spring. There's another hole in here. One end of this spring goes in it. Then insert your park paw. And if you're having trouble hooking up your spring, then sometimes may help you to flip it over We'll have to push it around to get it past this dial sticking up and to get it over this piece right here. 
once you get it in here it should look something like this don't forget to put your spacer on and now we'll have everything reassembled okay guys our next step our final step is going to be putting our side cover on now before you do this go around make sure your gasket's in good condition if you're the type that likes to put a little bit of sealer on yours i would just put me a very you know skim it across Otherwise, as long as your gas gets in good shape, you should be fine. So now that we got our case slid down here, now it's time to go around and reinstall your bolts. Put your one sensor back in it. You want to make sure that your your dots here are pointing towards your P because that's what we had ours in was parked when we took it out. Make sure that your slot here is lined up with your two marks on your case and everything should be ready to go once you tighten everything back up. If you guys find videos like this helpful and, and interesting to keep your machines up and on the trail, don't forget to give us a follow on TikTok. Give us a subscribe here on YouTube and as always, we appreciate y'all watching and we'll catch y'all in the next video.